And my first reaction was to go over to the south shore of Shaker Lakes, which would have been wiped out, and start counting trees to see how many trees would be destroyed. I don't think they had ever seen a community rise up the way this one did. And tennis shoes. <laughs> the plan had been to, on the part of Mary Elizabeth Croxton of our garden club, to get a group together of the garden clubs that had plantings in the Shaker Lakes. There were many, many garden clubs that had plantings in parts of the park. And uh, they were going to just give it up because here was this freeway. So I called and said, let's keep them together and fight the freeway. My garden club had $10,000, which um, they wanted to spend on educational projects. And everybody was supposed to come with an idea as to how to spend this money. So when it was my turn, I said, let's save the Shaker Lakes. And everybody went, oh. And they felt this was really rather a large project and maybe I should go off and do my homework or something. <laughs> well, Bert Porter said, who's worried about a dinky duck pond in a two-bit park? He said, they'll be able, pe more people will enjoy the park. They'll be driving through. There'll be all these people driving through and they can <laughs> see the park. Well, of course, there wouldn't have been anything left to see, but fringe on each side. From there, we had a, we had a walk with Jean Aiken our garden club did. And she kept saying, somebody has to do something. It's going to be a lot of work, but somebody has to do it, at which point she pointed out the oldest tree around. And, and of course, we had to fight apathy. We had to fight people who, getting the interest of the public was something at first, because many people thought it couldn't be, couldn't be stopped anyhow, so why try? I went to Harold Wallen for advice because he was successful at keeping freeways out of the metropolitan parks. And he advised me to apply for an, an environmental natural history landmark. And at that point, we started uh, putting together these books with pictures and script and so forth, demonstrating what we had. The National Audubon Society has nature centers all over the country, which they have looked at and decided whether or not it was a good idea to have them. So we wanted this one checked out by an Audubon naturalist. And actually what we had here was uh, perfect for uh, what Betty was describing as a nature center. We had uh, deep woods, we had scrubby bush, and we had, we had marsh, we had ponds, and we had a, a few little open areas also. We had almost every type of habitat that uh, you need for a nature center. Generally, there's a two-year wait for a study. Well, it was my job to see if I could get it passed at the meeting we were having. We had to get the idea approved. So somebody said, go talk to Mrs. Richard Nash. She's very interested in education. Well, it was a matter of getting together a group of people who could operate as a whole, which we did, which was the committee, it was the beginning of the Nature Center board, really. And we had people from, um, we had lawyers, we had people from all over on that board. It was very carefully put together. Uh, one time, uh, our representative, Charles Vanick, was in town, and he had uh, Stuart Udall, who was then Secretary of the Interior, and the Park Conservation Committee had a cocktail party at Mary Elizabeth's house and persuaded them to drop in briefly. And I managed to take Stuart Udall by the hand across the road down to the bed of Doan Brook and say, look, right here is going to be a four-layer interchange higher than these trees. And he looked at me and he knew we were fighting freeway. He said, oh, an interchange here? And he said, I'll try to help. Because I understood afterwards that Columbus thought it was a done deal. They never figured out what did happen. The little ladies, ladies in tennis, tennis shoes. shoes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what they were called that day. They made great fun of the little ladies in tennis shoes. That's what we were. Yeah. I'd like to have people know about that freeway fight. I think it involved enough people. And most of the neighbors are, are, don't even know about the freeway. 
they don't realize they wouldn't be here. And you know, if it, that's true, it, it, no, mm -hmm. they wouldn't be here because the freeway would have been so close that those homes, the ones that weren't destroyed, would not have been habitable anyhow. They, so those young people that I see with their children who come to the nature center don't even know about the freeway.